Hello, everyone. Welcome to the lecture on basic configurations of enzyme reactors. In this lecture, first we will define the ideal and non-ideal conditions, and then we will move to the part of the reactor types and operational modes, in which we will be working with three different ideal reactors. One is the batch-wise operated strategic reactor, the second one is continuously operated pack bed reactor, and the last one is continuously operated strategic reactor. And we will be using these abbreviations BSTR for the first reactor, CPBR for the second reactor, and CSTR for the third reactor. So let's start with ideal conditions. We can define ideal conditions for an operation or for a biocatalyst. So what would be the ideal conditions from operational point of view? Mixing is sufficiently intense and uniform in a strict tank reactor, no back mixing in a plug flow reactor or ideal tubular reactors, constant and uniform process conditions, temperature, pH, and pressure in a reactor, in a process, no mass transfer limitations with immobilized enzymes, and no mass transfer limitations in multiphasic reaction media. So these are the ideal conditions from an operational point of view. From a biocatalyst perspective, ideal conditions can mean that we have no enzyme deactivation under process conditions. In case of immobilized enzymes, there is no enzyme leakage from the immobilized preparation. However, the reality is not that ideal. So we can have deviations from ideality, both from operational perspectives and biocatalyst perspectives. From the operational point of view, we can have incomplete mixing and back mixing because of channeling of fluid, recycling of fluid, or creation of stagnant regions in the vessel. Non-isothermal operation due to inefficient mixing, pure heat transfer to the entire reaction medium, pH gradients, Due to pure mixing, if we have a pH change during the reaction, then at the end, we can have not the homogeneous pH within the reaction vessel. And last but not least, we can have mass transfer limitations while using immobilized enzymes or working with multiphasic reaction media. From the biocatalyst point of view, we can have enzyme deactivation under process conditions, or we can have enzyme leakage from the immobilized preparation if we are working with immobilized enzymes. So as I mentioned at the beginning, today we will be working with three different ideal reactors with the abbreviations of BSTR for strict tank reactor, CPBR for continuously operated pack bed reactor, and CSTR for continuously operated strict tank reactor. We will be working with material balances and kinetic equations for these reactor types and operation modes. And I will be showing you as well different configurations while using free soluble enzymes or immobilized enzymes. So let's start with BSTR, batch-wise operated strict tank reactor. What are the characteristics of a BSTR? We can start the reaction either with the addition of the enzyme or substrate, or if we are working with cofactor dependent enzymes, for example, nicotinamide cofactors, we can also start the reaction by the addition of this cofactor. Usually 20 up to 30 volume percent left for the headspace. Enzyme is inactivated via temperature or pH change and removed from the reaction medium after reaction completion. Enzyme recovery and reuse possible with immobilized enzymes, for example, via filtration. While we are working with different reactors, ideal reactors, we will be seeing these figures uh, for other reactors as well. So let's start with figure A. This is what we see, concentration time profile. And in this profile, we see that we are working under unsteady state conditions, which means the substrate is changing over time and the product is changing over time. We have substrate depletion, substrate conversion, and product formation. In figure B, we see the concentration over the location distance. This figure shows us that irrespective of which location, 
that we are taking a sample, at time x, we should measure the same substrate and product concentration. At the beginning of the reaction, at time 0, we have the maximum substrate concentration, and this concentration is measured irrespective of any point in this reactor. And at the end of the reaction, at time x, we should have the minimum substrate and maximum product concentration irrespective of which basically point that we are taking this sample, it's irrespective of which location that we are taking the sample. So what are the possible configurations of a BSTR? In configuration A, we see that we can run a BSTR using free enzymes. In configuration B, we are using immobilized enzymes so that we can recover and reuse the immobilized enzymes, which will give us the possibility to run repetitive batch experiments. In configuration C, we are using immobilized enzymes packed in a column. We are pumping the reaction medium through this column. The rest substrate and the form product is coming back to the strip tank reactor. We don't have any continuous inlet to this strip tank reactor or from this strip tank reactor. So no continuous inlet, no continuous outlet. We are running the configuration C under batch conditions. While we are working with immobilized enzymes, we have to use sufficiently high string rates or flow rates so that we can avoid any mass transfer limitations. At the same time, we have to be very careful that we don't have any detrimental effects on the en immobilized enzyme. We shouldn't basically deactivate the enzyme or trigger the enzyme leakage. Another configuration possibility would be that we are packing the immobilized enzyme in a basket and this basket is connected to a mixer. I'm showing here the picture that we took from our collaboration partner within the Interfaces project, the Spincam company, and this is the rotating bed reactor and this basket which is used for packing the immobilized enzyme. Overall, I introduced you four different kinds of configurations for a BSTR, batchwise operated strip tank reactor, while using immobilized enzyme or free enzyme. The second ideal reactor is continuously operated pack bed reactor, CPBR. So what are the characteristics of these reactors? It's also called as ideal tubular reactor or plug flow reactor. Because of ideality, there is no back mixing, which means that no elements of fluid overtaking or mixing with any other element ahead or behind. And typically, we are working with a void fraction of 40 to 60 percent of volume, which means that this basically void fraction is occupied with the reaction medium. So as we did for BSTR, for the first reactor, we work with two different figures. The first one, the A, is showing us the concentration over time. So again, the blue one is the starting substrate concentration and the uh, lila one is the end substrate concentration. What this graph means is that at the entrance of this reactor, we have the highest substrate concentration, whereby the substrate is converted along this reactor, and at the exit of this reactor, we have the lowest concentration. If we are taking samples from one position of this reactor at any time under steady state conditions, we should always measure the same substrate and the same product concentration, irrespective of time. And this is what we see in the first figure. As I already mentioned, at the beginning of this reactor, at the entrance of this reactor, we have the highest substrate concentration. And at the exit of this reactor, we have the lowest substrate concentration and the maximum product concentration. This is what we exactly see in the figure B. The substrate concentration is decreasing with the length of the reactor and the product concentration is increasing with the length of the reactor. And when we now compare these two figures, A and B, with the A and B figures of 
BSTR, what we what we would see is that the figure A is analog of figure B of BSTR, and other way around, the figure B of CPBR is an analog of figure A of BSTR. So as the third reactor, we moved to continuously operated street tank reactor CSTR. So what are the, again, characteristics of this ideal reactor? We are working with a well-mixing conditions, or well-mixed conditions, and we can have different configurations that are possible depending on the enzyme cost and operational costs. And again, we should work with the figure A and figure B for the concentration over time and concentration over location distance. So what we see here is, first of all, for the figure A, the concentration over time, that we have, after a while, after we reach the steady state, the substrate concentration is the lowest and the product concentration is the highest in this reactor. That's why we called that CSTR is working at outflow conditions. The same way, since we are working with well-mixed conditions, after a while, after the steady state is reached, when we take a sample, irrespective of which point that we take the sample, we should get the same substrate concentration and same product concentration, irrespective of the location distance, due to the well-mixed conditions, due to ideality. So these are the figure A and figure B for CSTR. Again, to highlight, CSTR is working at outflow conditions. So now let's move to different configurations of a CSTR. On the left side, configuration A, we see the continuous inlet and continuous outlet while using a free enzyme. We can use this kind of a setup if we are working with very cheap enzymes. Configuration B is showing us that we can keep the enzyme, either the free enzyme or immobilized enzyme with a membrane. We also use a term for this kind of setup as enzyme membrane reactor. If we are working with a free enzyme, we can use ultrafiltration membranes. If we are working with immobilized enzymes, we can use membranes with larger pore sizes, which are indeed cheaper than the ultrafiltration membranes. While we are working with this setup, we have to be very careful with the mixing and the flow rate so that we can avoid any kind of detrimental effect on the immobilized enzyme or the free enzyme. Another configuration of a CSTR reactor is a differential reactor. How we can have a differential reactor? The thing is that we have in this kind of setup different flow rates and we should have a higher flow rates that is recirculating in the pack bed reactor and this flow rate should be high enough so that we have very small substrate conversions for the single fluid passes through the column. As a rule of thumb, the recirculation flow rate, so this inner flow rate that we see here, should be at least 20 times faster than the continuous flow entering and leaving the reactor. Overall, we can have also different configurations for a CSTR, depending on the enzyme form that we are using. To summarize, the configuration A is showing us the free enzyme that can be used in the inlet and the outlet. And as we learned that we can run this setup if we are working with cheap enzymes, or we are working with enzyme membrane reactors, as we see in configuration B, either using the free enzyme or immobilized enzyme, we can have a differential reactor, but we should have at least 20 times higher than recirculation flow rates compared to the flow rates entering and leaving the reactor so that we can have the street tank reactor conditions, the continuously operated street tank reactor conditions. Or we can also 
have this rotating bed reactor whereby we have continuous inlet and continuous outlet. So these configurations could be different possibilities for a CSTR. Now to summarize of the profiles of different configurations that we learned for a BSTR, for a CPBR and CSTR. So these configurations that we already learned, depending on the enzyme form that we use, and the reaction or the reactor profiles A and B, these are important for characteristics of each ideal reactor. So to summarize, the concentration time profile, the figure A of a BSTR is an analog of figure B of CPBR, the concentration location distance profile. On the other hand, the figure B that we see here, that the concentration location distance of BSTR is analog of the figure A concentration time of CPBR. What is different in the CSTR? The CSTR runs at outflow of conditions. That's why after the steady state is reached, we have the minimum substrate concentration and the maximum product concentration. And when we take the sample in any location of a CSTR, we should always measure at that time X, the same substrate and same product concentration because we are working with well mixed conditions. We reach now the end of our lecture. I would like to thank you, European Commission, for the Interfaces Project and you for your kind attention. Thank you.